Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. Then I need to open the two question, docu two questionnaire document. We're starting off with a question to delete a comment. Now in this instance, it's nice and easy, and um, the comment is easily seen because it's on the first page. This all depends on the settings on your computer. Sometimes this is my default. Um, it's set to show comments, but if that wasn't available and it was a long document, you might have spent unnecessary time looking for a comment. So don't go and scrolling the, through the document to look for comments. Just click on next and it'll automatically jump to the next or the only comment that's in the document. And then you can just click delete straight from there. Or alternatively, you can also right click on the comment if you do happen to see it and click on delete comment. Next, we need to format this heading um, and we need to change the character spacing. Now the character spacing is not something that can be found on your regular ribbons. You actually need to go to your font dialog box for that and go to the advanced tab. So we need to change the spacing to expanded and we need to expand it by four points and we need to change the scale to 120 which is not available in the menu so I'll just go and type it in by hand and press OK. Now we need to do some revision on the document so um, we need to accept or reject track changes so I'm going to the review tab but note I don't switch on track changes in order to be able to accept or reject them you don't need to switch it on you can just go to accept or reject in this case, um, they didn't give us plain instructions just to accept everything. We actually need to accept some of it and reject some others. So I'm going to click on the reviewing pane so that I can see who did what. So I need to accept the author's change. So I'm going to click on the author section and say accept. And I need to reject the assistance section or the assistance change. So then I'll just click on that and say reject. Once this little icon comes up, there aren't any comments or track changes in your document, then you know um, you've done it correctly. Then all of the changes are resolved. Now we'll be working with some content controls or form fields. So we're going to start off with this one with a date of birth where we need to change the format of this little form field. So you can change that by going to the developer tab and clicking on properties once you've selected it. Or for a form field you can just right click on it and say properties now I don't want it to be regular text anymore I want it to be a date and there's a very specific format I want all right so I'm gonna to go to the date format and um, I can just type in whatever I want over there as a customized format but I always prefer checking what's actually available in the drop-down menu and it happens there's the exact one that I actually need um, just pay attention to the separator. In this case, it's a dash and not a forward slash. Um, so it has to be the, the little dash in order to get your marks. Now we also need to display a help message on the status bar. Now if we need to add any kind of help message, we need to go to add help text. And there are two areas where we can add this, either on the status bar or by pressing the help key. I need it for the status bar, so then I'll just type in what they've given me. Now we need to insert a combo box. Now um, here by meal preference I need to insert a combo box and they didn't specify whether it should be a content control or a form field. There is a difference. If you hover over these at the top you'll see it says rich text content control and if you go to the little suitcase at the top here it tells you it's a form field. Now they have a drop down one here, but it's called a drop down form field. It's not called a combo box. So I'm going to play it safe and actually choose this one that says combo box control. And um, the content controls doesn't allow you to just right click and go to preferences or 
um, properties so I'm going to just make sure I'm, I've selected the right one and go to properties over there and here are the um, here's the area where I can add the different items that needs to be in the drop down list so I just click on add and I type it in just as it stands in the paper I press enter once and I press enter again because you'll see the ad is currently blue so I can just press enter again and I can quickly type in the rest Oh, don't need another one okay and you can check that works um, some of the form fields don't work if you want to check it if you're in this view if you've restricted editing to filling in forms then it allows you to actually test it so don't worry if everything doesn't work when you try to test it right now we get to the difficult one of this paper or of this question and that is tabs we all love tabs don't we Right, so they give us a screenshots of what it should look like and they give us specific instructions underneath. So let's do it in the order of those instructions. And it says start by setting and applying an 8 centimeter dotted leader tab. And I can see by the image at the top here, this is a left tab. So you can actually see the type of tab here in the top corner. And if you hover over it, it usually tells you what tab it is there you go it shows you it's a left tab so in order to work with tabs there are two things you need firstly your ruler has to be on and um, if you haven't got it on you can go to view and select ruler uh, if it is on already then you need to go and switch on your show and hide now um, before I've switched on the show and hide so that we can actually see I need to still insert a literal tab so I'm going to click tab on the keyboard one that's next to the queue usually and I'm just going to click tab in front of all of them and at the moment the tab just ends wherever the default is they aren't all e of equal length so basically what I want to do now is I want to make them all equal length and end them by eight well then they won't be equal length but yeah I want an equal space between the lots of them so lots of ways to do tabs I prefer um, this method but you're welcome to do it your way and um, I just select all three lines um, or whatever you need to apply it to please select everything don't just do it to the first one and make sure that you've got the right tab um, that you want selected at the top here you can just click through them and it'll change to the different types uh, but I want a left one so I'm going to keep it on left and I'm just going to apply it on the ruler I literally just go and click on the ruler and you'll see because I've selected those three it's automatically extended that tab that it actually ends here by eight now I still need to apply a leader line the dotted leader line so um, you can go to paragraph tabs if you want a uh, quick way if you click low enough on that little tab icon you can enter tabs right from there if you click slightly higher it opens up the wrong box so just be sure to click low enough select the tab that you want to change if there's more than one over here in this case there's just one change whatever settings you want to change you can actually change it to a different type of tab here at the top or you can change the leader and then press set and okay there you go now we need to insert a checkbox at this one um, and they want specifically want a checkbox form field so we go to developer that's not the one that's a content control that's not available in this mode anyway and I want a checkbox form field right click properties and they said the default value should be checked we're going to work at this um, on the pictures now so they say we first need to determine the size of these images so if I click on this once you'll see it actually shows me little placeholders um, on the far edges so this is one this is currently handled as one image and um, because they are grouped together so I'm going to click again so that I just select a single one and then I can check the size it's four by four centimeters Let's go scroll down I'm actually just going to switch off my show hide I don't need it anymore and I'm going to change this picture to also be four by four centimeters so just select that four by four now I need to move it up here so let's just drag it up a bit but you'll see at the moment 
it's actually not doing what I want it to do. There you go, it's moved up a bit. But what it's doing at the moment, it's still set to be in line with text. So it's actually obeying enters and alignment and spaces or whatever you want to do, um, which is not what I want. I want to change the wrapping of the picture. So I'm going to select the picture. Um, in this case, I think it's because it's the compatibility mode. It doesn't have all the normal options. So I'll just go here to wrap text and I'm going to choose in front of text because I don't want anything else moving around. And I'm just going to move that into the placeholder they've provided. I can still um, change it a bit with my arrow keys just to fine tune it. And then the instruction says that need, these need to be grouped together again. So to group something, you'll select the first object and then you're holding your control on your keyboard and you'll see the icon on your um, cursor actually changes to an arrow with a little plus and you can click once and you'll see it selected this second group as well. And now I can group the whole lot by going to picture group group. Now, if I click on it once, the whole lot will move together just to test. Okay, this was this paper, this um, question. Now there's one more that I'm going to close this one for. So I'm just going to save. That's the bad way. Always first save before you close. And then I'm going to open this to temp. And we need to save this document as a template with the same name. Now this sounds straightforward, but it's not. If we go to save as, just check. I'm just going to click on current folder, um, depending, depending on the version of Office you have. Um, I think 2013 and 2016 has this feature. Don't go and browse every time, just work in the current folder that is your exam folder. Now, at the moment, look at the file path. It's users, perfectionist, um, documents, CAT 2014. Now, the moment I change the save as type to a template, you'll see the file path actually changes to a, to a place on this, uh, in the system files for this PC. So if I click on Word template, do you see the file path has actually changed? So now I need to click back once so that I can actually go back to my exam folder and click on save. It says it will be upgraded to the newest file format. That's okay. They didn't give any other instructions. There you go. If I close this now, you'll see there's a duplicate of this one. And if I open this up a bit bigger, you'll see it's called a Microsoft Word template.